Hi everyone, I'm Pete from the Miniature Painting Channel, Pete the Wargamer, and in this video I'll be showing you how I went about painting these Union infantry from Epic Battles American Civil War, and I'll be using the paints from the Army Painter range to do so. The best starting step in painting miniatures is to prime, and this step is one that is often overlooked, especially by beginners. Primers help to give us a surface that our paint can properly adhere to, as well as giving us a more uniform colour to start the painting process against. There are many methods of priming, be it aerosol, airbrush or brush on, and what you choose is entirely up to you, as is the colour. However, I've chosen to use a grey primer here, as it would allow me to more easily apply the cooler blue tones that I'll be adding in the first few steps. You will also notice that I had attached the infantry to a lollipop stick. Holding this rank of miniatures with my fingers may have damaged the paintwork, but with a little super glue to hold them in place, I had a much better way to hold them. When tackling a scheme like this, I prefer to paint all of my base coats first, followed by the washes and then finally the highlights. It's nice to see your model progressing at each stage and it prevents you from accidentally ruining a good chunk of your paint job with these messier starting applications. Before I applied these, however, I wanted to thin the paints down with a little water. Roughly two parts paint to one part water is an ideal ratio, and you're looking for a consistency similar to what I created here. With the paint ready, the first areas that I painted were the lighter blue trousers, and the paint I'd chosen for this was crystal blue. Now, because I had thinned the paint, I wasn't expecting perfect coverage with the first coat. After this layer had been applied across the trousers, I let it dry fully, once dried, I could apply my second layer over the top. This resulted in a more solid looking base color that I can build up from. Additionally, it helped to ensure that the paint was applied smoothly and that it wasn't left with brush marks in it. As I've already mentioned, this thinning and layering technique is something that I repeated across all of the following base coats. The second base coat saw me applying some deep blue to the jackets and the kepis. This darker blue contrasted nicely against the lighter blue on the trousers. Like before, I thinned out this paint before applying two thin coats. For the exposed skin around the face and hands, I chose to use the paint Cobalt Skin. This paint works particularly well as a starting colour as it's light enough to benefit from a wash, whilst also being just dark enough to be able to highlight with a realistic skin tone. The next base coat involved using some of the reddish brown of a Dirt Spatter. This paint was first used to paint the wooden stocks of the rifle, with the warm tones of this paint being excellent for a wood effect. After painting the rifles, I then used this paint to tackle some of the hair of the soldiers. I picked out a few of the beards and hair with this paint, using a fine brush and just a little paint to do so. Any overspills onto the face were cleaned up with more cobalt skin. For the bedrolls carried by a few of the soldiers, I chose to use the light tan of Banshee Brown. The result is a canvas-like colour, perfect for not only representing the material's historical colour, but also for adding a little contrast and definition to the models. Like before, this paint was also used to paint some of the soldiers' hair as well. For the areas of black leather and fabric, I applied a base coat of Necromancer Cloak. These areas included the shoes, webbing, slouch hats and visors. I also used this paint as a basis for the metal areas like the barrel and banding found on the rifles. I would add metallic paint to this later, but this very dark grey would serve as a good starting point. Finally, this paint was used to paint some of the remaining beards and hair of the soldiers that had not already been painted with dirt spatter or banshee brown. The final base coat to apply was to the breast buckles, and for this I chose to use weapon bronze. As this was metallic paint, I switched over to a different brush, as metallic paints have a tendency to wear out brushes more than regular paints do. In addition to this, after I completed this step, I cleaned out my paint water to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes into my other paints. At this stage, all the base colours had been applied, which meant I could begin to apply my wash. But first, much like the base coats, I also thinned this down too. However, instead of using water, I used some of the Army Painter's Quick Shade Mixing Medium. It's essentially the wash, but without any colour or pigment in it. By mixing this in equal parts with the wash, I maintain the same consistency, but reduce the strength of the wash, which helps to create a more subtle shading effect. With the wash mixed, I could begin to apply it over the soldiers. The colour I had chosen here was Strong Tone. It's a darkish brown that will not only provide shading in the recesses, 
but it also help to tone down the brightness of the blues. Ultimately, this will help to improve the overall realism of the completed miniatures. I apply this wash evenly across the whole miniature, making sure to avoid the wash pooling up too much in any single location. After the first layer was applied, I allowed the wash to fully dry before progressing on to the next step. With the wash completed, I could move on to painting the highlights. To paint most of these, I used the base color of an area mixed with some arid earth to create a lighter color. Mixing the two paints in equal quantities resulted in a lighter paint, but by using pale yellow, the result wasn't quite as washed out as it would have been had I used white instead. Starting off with a mix of crystal blue and arid earth, I use this to highlight the trousers. To highlight, I use a fine tipped brush and carefully drag this over the raised folds and details, focusing my application to the upper areas to help simulate how light would fall on them. This lighter color better contrasted against the darker recesses created by the wash, resulting in a much more detailed overall looking miniature. Now these highlights were completely optional. The miniature was perfectly usable after just the base coat and the wash. This would have kept the painting time down and allowed me to get an army of these painted up much quicker. But if like me, you want your miniatures looking their best, then I would recommend adding these highlights. The next step followed the same principle as before. This time I created a mixture of deep blue and arid earth to create a pale blue color that was used to highlight the kepi and the jacket. For the face and hands, instead of using a mixture of arid earth into my original paint, I instead used the fair skin tone of corpse pale. This was used to pick out some more prominent details like the knuckles and the nose. The wooden furniture of the rifle, along with the facial hair, was picked out using a mixture of dirt spatter and arid earth. This mixing was continued as I highlighted the bedroll with a light tan mixture of banshee brown and arid earth. For the areas of the leather and fabric that were base coated with necromancer cloak, I added the arid earth into the original base coat and carefully picked out the details of these areas. However, I didn't tackle the dark grey over the rifle just yet. Instead, these areas were highlighted using some of the silver metallic paint gun metal. By highlighting the dark grey with necromancer cloak with a silver paint like this, I created the appearance of a dark metallic colour. The final highlight saw me apply a small amount of greedy gold to each of the brass buckles to help boost their brightness. And with that, all the models needed was a coat of matte varnish and a suitable basing scheme, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Union Infantry. Now while this guide focuses on just the infantry, the colours and techniques could be used to paint other American Civil War Union forces too, such as cavalry and artillery. So thank you for joining me in this painting guide. I hope that you've enjoyed watching and that you've been able to learn something from it. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.